The Representative's Council Speaker, Ahmed bin Ibrahim al Mullah, extended his thanks and appreciation to all who contributed in forming the family law, especially His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa, by issuing Royal Decree Number 24 of 2017 to form a Sharia committee to review the draft of the family law that included scholars and jurists from the two sects to determine the wording of the articles of this law which its unanimous approval is regarded as a great gain to the Kingdom of Bahrain, its unity and stability. al Mullah added that this project is one of the most important outcomes of His Majesty the King's reform project. He underlined that the most notable aspects of the family law, which the Council approved today, is its support to rights and freedoms as well as its preservation and cohesion of the Bahraini family fabric. And Mullah hailed the efforts exerted by all the involved parties, especially the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, along with the efforts of the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee of the Council, with constant cooperation from the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, and all the deputies and the General Secretariat of the Council, wishing everyone success for the good of the homeland and its citizens. The Representatives Council approved today the family law in its third extraordinary session, chaired by the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Ibrahim, rather, Ibn Ibrahim Al Mullah. The meeting discussed the draft law of the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee regarding the issuance of the family law. The law governs family matters such as marriage, provisions, divorce, and custody. It also covers the duties and rights with, of husbands and wives after approving the draft of its amendments. The Council of Representatives referred it to the Shura Council. The meeting also discussed a draft law from the Prime Minister regarding the amendment of the law of proceedings before the Sharia courts issued by Decree Law 26 for the year 1986. The Council approved referring the draft law to the concerned authorities. The Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, participated in the 22nd World Petroleum Council Conference that is held in Istanbul, Turkey. He affirmed that the National Oil and Gas Authority is keen on enhancing the status of the Kingdom of Bahrain in international events, in addition to attracting international oil events, conferences, and exhibitions. He highlighted the WPC's keenness to prepare national capabilities and enhance their efforts under the wise leadership's directives to nurture Bahrainis as they are the source of the Kingdom's achievements on the local, regional, and international levels. The Minister delivered a speech in which he affirmed that Bahrain's participation in this international event reflects the wise leadership's keenness to enhance the accomplishments of the Kingdom and enhance its status in international events, which he added is the goal of the National Oil and Gas Authority as part of its strategy to achieve the wise leadership's aspirations. The conference included meetings, workshops, and seminars that included discussions regarding the future of traditional and non-traditional energy resources, global energy policies, and investment opportunities in the sector. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received the Minister of Information Affairs Ali bin Mohammed al-Ramehi along with Arab Ministers Information participating in the work of the 48th session of the Council of Arab Ministers of Information that was held yesterday at the headquarters of the General Secretariat of the League of Arab States in Cairo. The minister who chairs the Arab Information Minister's Council's current session delivered a speech in which he thanked the Egyptian President and conveyed to him the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa. Ramehi said that no one can negate Egypt's murals, rather merits except someone who is a denier, ignorant about history or unable to read the future, praising Egypt's role in the protection of Arab national security. President Assisi reaffirmed the important role of the media in shaping the real awareness of the Arab people as to the challenges and threats facing Arab countries, especially the unprecedented circumstances and the spread of terrorism dangers in the region that threaten the entirety or rather the entity of the national state. He said that terrorism has inflicted awful losses on the Arab nation during the previous years, adding that the decisive and forceful combating of terrorism has become the duty at all levels through a comprehensive strategy observant to all the dimensions of this phenomena, especially the media mission of spreading correct information and promoting the values of forbearance and illumination. The official spokesman for the Egyptian presidency, Ala Youssef, said that President Assisi in this context pointed to the pivotal role of the Arab media that is keen on the issues of the nation by confronting the false awareness that some terrorism-sponsoring powers and countries seek to create. 
The Egyptian president added that there are no half solutions when it is related to the loss of innocent lives and the preservation of the people's capabilities, affirming that Egypt, as a firm principle in its foreign policy, is keen on non-interference in the affairs of countries, nor conspiring or damaging any other country, especially its neighbors, said the presidential spokesman. The minister affirmed that huge responsibility shouldered by the Arab media during this precise phase underwent by the Arab nation. The ministers presented several suggestions aimed to develop the joint Arab media work, including activation of the Arab Media Ethics Convention and the formation of a mini-ministerial panel by the Arab Information Ministers to activate the media strategy for counterterrorism. In a press conference hosted by the This is Bahrain organization, the founding of the King Hamad Global Center for Interfaith Dialogue and Peaceful Coexistence was announced, as well as the official launch of the Kingdom of Bahrain Declaration, both of which are milestones placed by Bahrain on the path of global coexistence. Dialogue and peaceful coexistence between people is a concept that has long been pushed aside due to the fact of it being a matter of fact that people should learn to live with each other and coexist in the same place. Regrettably, this has not been the case for a very long time. Famine after disaster, terrorism and racist phobias have separated individuals from each other. The Kingdom of Bahrain has always been a leading example in true coexistence with equality in religious freedoms. Due to the long history of Bahrain's coexisting communities, under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, This is Bahrain will hold an exhibition, dinner and press conference to officially launch the Kingdom of Bahrain Declaration and the King Hamad Global Center for Interfaith Dialogue and Peaceful Coexistence. This is to be held in Los Angeles, USA. The Kingdom of Bahrain Declaration is a very special document which has been um, modeled on the words and the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. And it's a document that brings um, all people together to share religious freedom and love and mutual respect and to live together in harmony and reject terrorism and um, words and deeds of hate and anger and violence and basically to, to um, reject all forms of radicalization. It's to bring all religions of the world together as one in condemnation of violence, extremism and terrorism and present to the world the beauty of living together as we have done for centuries in the Kingdom of Bahrain as one family with total religious freedom where Jews, Christians, Christians, Hindus, Buddhists, Sikhs, um, we all live together here as one family where there is no ignorance of each other's faiths or, or um, cultures or heritage. And it's, it's why we have survived uh, through so many things in the Kingdom of Bahrain because our sense of family and peaceful coexistence is what strengthens us and keeps us together on the right path. This event will complement the launch of the King Hamad Chair in Interfaith Dialogue and Peaceful Coexistence at Sapienza University in Rome. The exhibition will feature the Muslim, Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, Sikh and Hindu communities, portraying the kingdom's outstanding religious freedom, and the dinner and press conference will be attended by international media, religious leaders, ambassadors and other officials. This will give the greatest opportunity for each and everybody to learn about all other religions and with that their wisdom will come more and more powerful. This is the opportunity through which they will come to know about the religions which they have not heard about. For Bahrain International, this is Sarah Lebrek.